Jay here from Stratford Paddock. This is it. This is the big one. Manchester United travel to Crystal Palace. Monday night game. Mm. With me, as always, is Mr. Joe Smith. Joe, yeah. are you excited for this? I'm this could excited. be the difference between Europa Conference and Europa League. It's Would big. you say that Crystal Palace is the is the best name of any team in the Premier League? It probably is, isn't it? Wolves is good, but when it's Wolverhampton Wanderers, the real name, it's, that's just boring. Yeah. But the, the Crystal Palace is like something from a Lord of the Rings film. Crystal Palace. Do you know what I mean? Everything else is quite sort of simple. I, Arsenal, I guess, is quite cool because it's got guns and that. Yeah. But I think Crystal Palace is the best team. Crystal name. Palace, to me, sounds like a really naff nightclub. Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. Do you know it's what the sort I mean? of nightclub they'd have in works up there. Yeah, like, it's yeah. just, like, it shuts up one. Yeah, and all the glasses yeah. are plastic. Yeah. Just those called Crystal. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's just, yeah. It's, it, they do bingo on a Sunday. Yeah. It's just They make rubbish. you queue even though it's almost empty. <laughs> you know, like just little things to try and make it seem good. Like, now, nah, yeah, wait there, lads, wait there. I'll just go and check. You look at it, you walk in, there's three people in there. <laughs> That kind of place, yeah. You're that's right. my that's my image of Crystal Palace. Anyway, yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, this has been the preview. Thanks for watching. Um, no, let's uh, talk about Europa because yeah. you're one of those, right? You're a glasses half full kind of guy, and you've always been like, look, the Europa League, it's all right. You get behind once you're in there. You're playing Barcelona. You're playing. Roma, you're playing <laughs> Sociedad. It seems you've yeah. heard of. There's decent teams in the that competition. Like Madrid as well. So Ajax like and teams like that, yeah, yeah. Obviously, like it's not a bad competition. And when and if you win it, you're happy. Yeah. However, Joseph, the There's conference, no which mm. is a possibility. Yeah. Me and you sat here the other day, and we went through the Europa Conference teams, and mm. genuinely, I'd never heard of about nine out. A lot seven. of them are just work five aside teams that have gotten out of hand. They are. They? Yeah. Like, yeah, they they just look like th names that someone's made up on the way to the to, yeah. the, to fives or whatever. It's yeah. just like, what is this? Um, we, I mean, it's one of those, and it? it's a weird situation where you'd want either Europa League or nothing, but you don't get that choice, do you? No, well, the Europa League, obviously, we've got to finish fifth or sixth to get that. I think fifth is probably out of the equation with six points behind Tottenham, four games to go. Yeah. It's possible, but I don't see it. And they've already lost three in a row, and I don't see them losing seven in a row to end the season. Um However, dropping down to 7th and 8th is very possible. We're yeah. only one point ahead of Newcastle, uh, three points ahead of Chelsea with the worst goal difference. So one bad weekend and we're in the Europa Conference League yeah. or even out of Europe if West Ham pulled the finger out for the last couple of games. Um, but the Europa League is a really good tournament because it's obviously not as good as the Champions League. I'm not like, I'm like oh, I actually prefer it to the Champions yeah, League. Yeah, no, you can't. That's a hard sell, isn't it? It's really hard to win. Yeah. It's been around for a long time, so there's, it's got an established amount of pedigree. Even though it's not as high as some of the other trophies, it's still difficult to win, and yeah. it still means something. Yeah. Like, it, what, how long has it been around for? Since the seventies, eighties? Was this the Euro? This was the UEFA Cup? Was the UEFA Cup? Yeah, yeah. No, so they got rid of the Cup Winners' Cup. So yeah, listen, the Euro. It's, no like, it's, it's actually it. quite yeah. good, and it I is. and I think as well that it's the perfect combo as well. Where I don't mean United next season, but let's say next season or in a couple of seasons, win the Europa League, and actually we're only six points off top as we go into March. It's the sort of competition you can drop it. Do you know what I mean? If you drop it, it's like your, it's like your fourth A level. Do you know yeah. what I mean? If you drop it, no one's going to be annoyed with you. Right, you only, okay. like, if you've got something better to focus on, the Europa is a fine thing to leave by the wayside. But if you haven't, it's also a decent focal point for a season. Like as 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 uh, Mourinho sort of proved, it's another way into the Champions League as well. Let's not forget. And you know, I think it's a decent competition. So it was founded, I think, in 1971, according to <laughs> producer Ethan. There we go. And before that, it was what? It's called the Something Nations Cup, wasn't it? Was it the Fairs Cup? Was that? Yes. It? Yeah, I think it was that. Yes, I think it was. Silence from the person who's presumably got the Wikipedia page. Yeah, was open. it the Fairs Cup? Is that right? What was the last trophy that Newcastle won? Fairs Cup. I don't know if that was the first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your help. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's. We, we did put him on the yeah, spot. Yeah. Also, bit. yeah. Um, if we beat City in the FA Cup final, yes. Sorry, when we beat City, very well in the put. FA Cup final, very well put indeed. We'll get into the Europa via that route. Won't Osmosis. We? Yeah. So yeah. it's not all you know doom and gloom. There's always the opportunity to play in Europe's second best competition. It's going to be so rough if we end up in the Conference League. I think it'll feel rough if we don't get. Do you know what I hate as well, right? Well. It's like you'll get people saying, "Yeah, think of the aways though. That'll be great. Like a nice little trip to." And then some of these grounds, you get away allocation of like 
12. Yeah. Like, you ain't going, bro. No. Like, don't kid yourself. 86 people yeah. are allowed in. Yeah. <laughs> and like, also, there's just... The playing in the local park. Yeah. Like, it's not like you've got an allocation of 2,000. No. And this is sort of... Sometimes you need, like, just... It's impossible to get a visa for the country, <laughs> let alone get into the ground. Um, just as a little small thing, and obviously people at home can't see this, I think it's the BBC um, league table we've got there, a little screenshot. And all league tables have this. The team in fifth always has like a line above and below them. Yeah. What is that to signify? What is that for? Because it, what I don't, I, I've never understood why the fifth team is 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 highlighted. Like there's a line between fifth because the line under fourth is Champions League. Yeah. But the line under fifth doesn't mean anything. Why isn't the next line under sixth and then the next line under eighth to represent the European competitions? That's the playoffs. Yeah, but seriously though, what is it? If it is, does anyone know this? I've always thought this. There's a line under Villa in fourth, and then under fifth, there's a line under Tottenham. But fifth isn't anything that sixth isn't, is it? I let me know. I Sorry. don't know. It's one of those. So it's one of those weird quirks. It's one. Of, no one really knows. No one knows. It's, it's and it's, they, they do it on all league tables. They do it on Sky. They do it on like all the little apps and everything. BBC. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, is there some sort of qualification process no. for the Europa? You're, no. you're in it straight. It's if you finish fifth, you're Europa straight into the Europa League. Like. Fifth and sixth get Europa League. So why isn't the line under sixth? I don't know. Isn't it mad as well, right, that fifth this season isn't going to be Champions I know. League? It's because Spain that, and Germany, that, isn't it? That, the, the coefficient... Sorry, Italy and Germany. The coefficient, like, was it nine out of last... Or seven out of last eight years, sorry? England would have had that fifth place as yeah. the champion. But this year, we haven't. No. Nope. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of glad. Because if we had, that would have meant that City have probably won the Champions League again or were going to win it or, yeah. you know. I and don't also, know, we aren't laugh. finishing fifth. So no. if anything, it's just hurt another English team, which I'm quite happy with. That's what I mean. It's, yeah. all, it's all happy for us. Exactly. Uh, talk about momentum. It'd be good yeah. to take some momentum into the FA Cup final because we haven't got going in the league, have we, all no. season. And we certainly haven't got going of late. If you look at our recent form, I think, is it two wins out of the last seven or something in the league? It's not great at all. Mm -hmm. Um it does worry you that if you end up going to Wembley on the back of, you know, I don't know, three wins out of the last ten or whatever, yeah. you, you're not likely to, to sort of be full of beans, are you, when you get there? No. Do you believe in momentum? Do you think that's an important thing? Do you I think United need to be concerned? I think it's a massive thing, but I do, th I do feel like, as far as this season's concerned, the league momentum is completely divorced from the cup momentum. I don't even, I'm not even sure us winning our last four games would even help us win the FA Cup final. I think that the the mentality and the the mindset will be so different on the day. Yeah, and it's I don't know. Obviously, I'd rather win, and I, mo mostly for the league, for the Europa stuff, and you know, getting in the best competition we can with the points we've got left. But I don't think that us winning the last four games will necessarily help us beat City. I just think single day FA Cup final. Sort of last season, like. Other, I mean, obviously they scored early, very early on in the season, but I thought City looked far worse than they'd looked in the league when we played yeah. them in the Cup final, as they did against Inter in the Champions League final. I think it's just a one-off thing, but I just don't want to lose because I don't want to finish ninth, which is genuinely very possible with the last three games that West Ham have got and last four that we've got. No, I hear what you're saying. I want to talk about predicts 11s. Yeah. Uh, we'll do yours first. Yes. Um, now, we don't know, do we, if... Bruno is going to be fit. That is no. the sort of the big story there. He's a doubt and he's a big story because he never misses a game. No. It's like unheard of. So you've put him in because obviously if he is fit, he will play. Yeah. Um, you've also got your back four there, which I believe is the, is, is it the same back four that we had against? It's the same back four Burn, we've had for Burnley the last couple and, of games, and, isn't it? Um, Bournemouth and everyone else. Yeah. So Casemiro obviously at centre back. Um, then you've got a midfield of Maynou. Um You've got with Christian Eriksen, who has been playing lately. Yeah. And Bruno Fernandez. And you've got Alejandro Ganacho, Rasmus Hoyland, and Anthony on the right. Obviously, Marcus Rashford is unfit. And there was a slight sort of debate question about whether um, Diallo would be in a team. But I yeah. get your thinking. I don't see he's going to drop Anthony after he's just scored his first Premier League goal this season. No, I don't think it's just going to. He's going to change that now. Um, I do. I just think that we have. We've got so few options at the minute. I mean, Mount's one that could maybe come in, but he's barely. I don't think. When's the last time he started a game? It's got to be six months ago. Yeah. Um, and other than that, Ahmad, like you said, is the one. But Anthony scoring the other day is is now less likely to get dropped than he was any of the other previous weeks, and he wasn't dropped then either. So why would we start now? I just think a lot of that team picks itself because of the amount of limited or the how limited the the, the options are. I agree. If you look at my team, very similar. Um, just mounting, yeah. Yeah, I've got mounting again. I mean, I've gone with Bruno, but we don't know. 
Um, I would like to see Mason Mount get a start. Yeah. Whether that happens remains to be seen. It is getting to the point now where I think he should be started. Yeah. Like he's played some minutes, he's got some games. We've, and we've got injuries as well. Casemiro's not in that midfield because he's probably going to play in defence. So is there no space for Mason Mount? If not, why not? Yeah. Why did you buy him? And when when will there be yeah. space for him? It's, it's, Just on the yeah. off chance that Bruno Fernandes is injured one every 250 games. That's what I mean. You yeah. think like you spent a lot of money on him. You made him your, your, your sort of marquee signing. Give the kid a chance. Um, let's move on to yeah. talk about Crystal Palace. Make sure you get involved in the chat in the comments. And also send us your score predictions as well. Film yourself in landscape. Uh, for 30 seconds give you score predictions send it to paddockmatchday at gmail.com Palace they're just being Palace aren't they really yeah they've, they've picked up a little bit I think under yeah. the new manager they've, they've only lost three of, of his ten games but they've only won four as well at four wins three losses three draws which is decent I think they've they look a lot better though I think the way they're playing I think they ran Newcastle ragged they beat Liverpool as well um, they, they look like a team that is improving um, which they've done a handful of times in the last few seasons don't they get the new manager bounce they look great under Vieira to start with yeah um, and then that sort of uh, went away but they're, they're, they're sort of they're the same team every year aren't they like regardless of who manages them they finish 13th yeah no matter what they're never truly Which, in a dogfight for bottom four no the, uh, the bottom three they never challenge for U europe in any sense at all they're just a, a typical difficult mid-table side that we've already lost to once this season let's not forget so you know it's going to be tough it is going to be tough um and we lost that it was the last game of the season a couple of seasons ago i think under Ragnit, wasn't yeah. that the last game where we lost as well oh was it sorry yeah look we lost this season oh, yeah, season. yeah, yeah. you're right I mean, our record against Crystal Palace ain't great over no. the last few years, to be honest with you. They've got a lot of decent players, though. Some we've been linked with. I think we've been linked with Mark Gooey, who is a doubt. Also, uh, Michael Elise looks like he's one of our main targets um, yeah. this summer. So, yeah, they, they, like you say, they've got good players. They, they don't really do anything amazing, but considering the budget and everything they've got and yeah. how much of a yo-yo team they are, then I dare say finishing sort of comfortably above the relegation spots isn't too bad if you're a Palace fan. Yeah. If you are a Palace fan, get involved in the comments and let me know. With all that being said, then my brother, give me a score mm, prediction. Away from, we're just struggling, aren't we? Yeah. I think that it's going to be close because every game we've had this season almost has been close, hasn't it? Like yeah. I said the other day in the, the debate we did, no matter who we play, it's quite close. Um, so I think it'll be quite close again. Um, but I think we'll sneak a 2-1 win. I don't know why. I just I, I think they'll score, but I think we'll actually creep a win, but in a in a p not particularly convincing performance. I hope you're right. Yeah. I do. <laughs> Obviously, I want Manchester United to win, but I think this just stinks of a one all this. Yeah, to me. I, can I just see that do. Well. I think it absolutely reeks of it. Yeah. Um, I hope I'm wrong though, and I hope Joseph is right, and United get three points and get that momentum going that we spoke about, so we can take it all the way to the FA Cup final and beat them. Blue cheating, whatever. Uh, anyway, I digress. Oh, Joe, man, thank Jay. you. You've Always a, a pleasure. Lot of non wins recently, I have to say. I know, I'm, but you're not I'm, far I'm, off. I know. I mean, if you, it's like if you just keep predicting non wins, you're usually right. Although Ten Hag said we've only lost three games this year since 2024, and he repeated that about four times with that interview with Gary Neville. Did he mention so. the finals thing? He didn't. I don't. Back know. to back finals. Oh, he did. Two mention finals that, in yeah. two years. Yeah, he in did. fact, if you want to go even further back, three and three. Look at me, I ask. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's been Joe Smith. Go and check out the Sloppy Joe's podcast. Very funny podcast. You know where to find that. You know where to find me as well, Jay Motty. This has been a preview for the Crystal Palace game. Don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe and send us your score predictions. Thanks for watching.